Okay, so let's take a look at a very common MCQ question. Venus return to the heart is decreased by the Valsava maneuver. So this is actually true because what happens with the Valsava maneuver is that there's going to be an increase in the intrathoracic pressure. Increase in intrathoracic pressure is going to cause a compression of the veins in the thorax. When the veins in the thorax are compressed, that means there's going to be a decrease in venous return. And then um, the second question, venous return to the heart is decreased by exercise. This is false because what happens with the, with the skeletal muscles during exercising, the skeletal muscles um, are going to compress the large veins during any movement, during any form of mo movement during exercise. So this compression of the large veins is going to cause um, increase in venous return and reduce blood pulling in the legs. So moving on to the fourth question, the refractory period in the cardiac cycle is increased by parasympathetic stimulation. This is actually true because what happens with parasympathetic stimulation is that um, there's going to be reduced transmission of impulses. When there's reduced transmission of impulses, that means there's reduced depolarization or no depolarization at all, hence lengthening the refractory period in the cardiac cycle. And then the last question, um, the refractory period in the cardiac cycle is reduced in second degree heart block. This is false because what happens in second degree heart block or incomplete um, heart block is that there is going to be um, reduced or incomplete transmission of impulses from the atria to the ventricles. This makes, uh, this reduces depolarization, hence lengthening the refractory period in the cardiac muscle or cardiac cycle. Okay, so moving on to the other question. The refractory period in, in the cardiac cycle lasts until cardiac contraction is complete. This is true because um, the refractory period um, gives the time to prevent cardiac tetany, which is like unstable depolarization, which causes a lot of muscle twitches. So we need to have a longer refractory period to prevent this tetany. And then the other question, the refractory period in the cardiac cycle is longer than the refractory period in skeletal muscles. This is also true because um, of the same reason we have stated above that we need to prevent cardiac tetany um, by lengthening the refractory period in the, in the cardiac cycle. And then the third question, the refractory period in the cardiac cycle prevents tetany of the cardiac cycle of the cardiac muscle so this automatically becomes true because it it has a longer refractory period so moving on to another question isovolumetric contraction of the left ventricle occurs until intraventricular pressure is about 80 millimeters of mercury so this is true because in the cardiac cycle the aortic pressure is about 80 millimeters of mercury so the intraventricular pressure has to be about 80 millimeters of mercury or above 80 millimeters of mercury so that ejection of blood from the left ventricle to the aorta can take place so if the uh, so if the intraventricular pressure is um, below 80 millimeters of mercury, um, isovolumetric contraction still occurs until it has overcome the, that pressure so that ejection can take place. Last question. In the normal cardiac cycle, increase in jugular venous pressure coincides with the QRS complex in the ECG. So this is actually true because the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization or ventricular systole. So what happens during ventricular systole, the atrioventricular valves are actually closed and they bulge into the atria. So when the atrioventricular valves bulge into the atria, this is going to cause an increase in the atrial pressure. So increase in the atrial pressure is going to cause an increase in the jugular venous pressure because there is going to be a stop in the venous inflow to the atrias. So when there is a stop to the venous inflow to the atrias, that means there is going to be more um, blood in the veins, hence causing pressure in the jugular veins.